Welcome to Thor Labs. My name is Matt, and today I will be discussing a method to identify the fast and slow axes of a wave plate. In many circumstances, it's not important to know whether you are aligned relative to the fast or the slow axis. The most important pieces of information are the retardance of the wave plate and how you are aligned relative to one of those two axes. However, in some cases it is critical to know whether you are aligned to the fast or the slow axis. There are several different methods that can be used to make this determination. Some of them require the use of a known retarder, while others require the use of complicated optical setups and expensive equipment. Today I will be discussing a simple method as presented by Peter Logofatu that simply requires knowledge of the Fresnel equations for reflection and transmission and an unprotected metal surface. Before I begin discussing the experiment, a quick note about polarization handedness and convention. In this example, the incident beam is linearly polarized at a 45 degree angle, which is represented by the green arrow. This arrow can be decomposed into its vector component. The component that is parallel to the horizontal x-axis, represented by the blue arrow, and the component that is parallel to the vertical y-axis, represented by the red arrow. Both of these components have the same amplitude. A quarter wave plate is now inserted into the beam with the fast axis vertical, which means that the slow axis is horizontal. The wave plate delays both components of the transmitted light, but since the slow axis has a higher refractive index than the fast axis, the component of light parallel to the slow axis is delayed more. The delay difference is one quarter of the light's wavelength, also referred to as a 90 degree phase difference. This 90 degree phase difference between the two components causes the transmitted light to become circularly polarized. There are two common conventions used to describe the handedness of circularly polarized light. One from the perspective of looking into the beam, back towards the source as we've done here. The second is looking along the beam and the direction that the beam is traveling. Changing the perspective changes the handedness used to describe the beam. Just keep in mind, from either perspective, if the beam rotates clockwise around the optical axis, the light is right circularly polarized. From the perspective of looking into the beam, the transmitted light in this example is right circularly polarized when the fast axis of the wave plate is vertical. When the fast axis is horizontal, as shown at the bottom, the component of light parallel to the vertical axis is delayed more, and this reverses the direction the circularly polarized light rotates. The light becomes left circularly polarized. Some applications, such as pharmaceutical research and development, are sensitive to the light's handedness, so it is critical to stay consistent with the chosen convention. So here in front of me, I have a helium neon laser that emits less than 2 milliwatts, an isolator, an unprotected gold mirror, a photodiode with a lens tube and an iris to minimize the effects of stray light. I have two polarizers aligned at 45 degrees relative to the table, and I have my wave plate that I am testing. So I've chosen an unprotected gold mirror because this makes the calculations of the reflectance of the system a little bit simpler. Really, any reflector can be used as long as it imparts a phase change upon reflection, but some mirrors, such as silver and aluminum, have an additional protective layer coated over the metal, and this makes calculating this much more difficult. Therefore, I've chosen this unprotected gold. So, to start with alignment, I begin with my analyzing polarizer. As I stated earlier, this polarizer is oriented at 45 degrees, and now I did this by placing it between two crossed polarizers, one which is horizontal and one which is vertical. I then rotated my analyzing polarizer until I achieved a power maximum, and that indicates that it's at 45 degrees relative to the surface of the table. Next, I will take my wave plate that's under test. Similar to the polarizer, I place this between two cross polarizers in order to determine that I am aligned with either the slow or the fast axis. I rotated the wave plate until I achieved a power minimum. 
And as I'm aligning my optics, I am looking at the back reflections off the surface of the optic to determine that I am normal to the path of my beam. Finally, I will place in my generating polarizer. Similar to the previous two optics, this was previously aligned to ensure that the transmission axis is at 45 degrees relative to the plane of the table. And again, I'm using the back reflection off the polarizer to ensure that the beam path is normal to the surface of my optic. Now that our system is aligned, here's a quick overview. The beam leaves the Heaney laser and passes through the generating polarizer. The wave plate reflects off the mirror and continues through the analyzing polarizer to the detector. The beam path defines the plane of incidence, which is parallel to the horizontal table surface. The plane of incidence defines the orientation of the S and P components. In this case, P is parallel to the table surface and S is perpendicular to the table surface. In this experiment, we've chosen a fixed angle of incidence, which is defined at the mirror surface. We'll need this angle when analyzing the measurements. So by using the Fresnel equations, we can predict the amount of reflectance we would expect through this system, depending on which axis we are passing through. You will see one reflectance curve when your fast axis is horizontal, and a different reflectance curve when your slow axis is horizontal. So in the cases maybe you are unsure which axis is which on your wave plate, or you just want to double check what you have, this is a nice simple method. So I'll take my first measurement, where I have one axis horizontal and one axis vertical, and I get a relatively low power measure. I then rotate my wave plate by 90 degrees to align the other axis. Take another power measurement, and I see that I have a relatively high amount of power. By knowing the total amount of power through the entire system, I can then calculate the reflectance of each orientation and correlate that to the two theoretical reflectance curves that I had calculated previously. And this will allow me to determine whether I'm aligned with my fast or my slow axis. I hope this helps with your application. If you have any questions, please contact TechSoup.